We have a new intro song for our live chat. Welcome nice. to our Circuit Breaker Chat uh, with Alan. He, today he will be sharing about Asian portrait and the uh, live uh, intro music that you just hear is from our is composed by our friend from Stranger Music Solution, Win. He he did the intro for our live chat, and uh, we are ha very happy to have that music playing. And also uh, we have a new sponsor for our Circuit Breaker Chat, uh, Photosphere. I believe you joined one of his chat last week. Uh, you get to understand uh, what they are doing. Uh, they are the official distributor for brands like Leo Photo, H&Y, Haida, and many more. Check out their website for more uh, product information. You, nice. So, awesome. Alan, how are, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, man. Not too bad, not too bad. Thanks for inviting me <laughs> yep, for this yep. uh, welcome, welcome second back. session. So, let me yep. bring my, my screen now. Yep, sure. Resume, yeah. I'm learning. It doesn't work, but okay. It happens, I guess. Yep. I think you so have are you to eager stop sharing. To, are you uh, eager to wait for the circuit breaker to be over and uh, resume your normal lifestyle? <laughs> yeah, you, I think we're getting used to it, yeah? Working remotely a little bit, yeah? Mm -hmm. And doing things remotely. Um, yeah, we'll see. See what happens. Hopefully after... No, the only thing I'm missing really is... Uh, is the traveling, yeah, especially yep. in Singapore, because be, Singapore is not a big place. So uh, used to go and uh, all over the place, yeah, for work and for pleasure. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the uh, uh, that's a little bit the the, the 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 challenge these days, yeah. Yeah, it is. I think it takes a while uh, before we can uh, resume normal traveling, you know, uh, activities. In fact, even it's just in Singapore. Ricky, I, mean, I got a uh, yeah. problem. It says sharing is paused. So, yeah, I know we're live, but uh, <laughs> bring your Let's share stop. window to the front. Yeah, so I don't know yeah. what's going on here. Yep. Got a little bit of uh, issue here. No worries, man. There's always some technical issues going here on here and there. Yeah. Mm. Let me see. Ah, it's getting All right. We are All right. Can you see me? Can you yep. see me? Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Good. So thank you for having me. So, um, uh, so can you can you hear me? Okay, guys. Yeah. Yes. yes. Good. Yeah. So, uh, so just uh, just a little bit uh, intro uh, for those who don't know me. I've been here since the uh, early nineties, and um, as some of you know me, uh, photography has been my uh, my hobby for for quite a while now since the late 80s and uh, so I've been uh, and I was fortunate to be uh, based in Singapore really early in uh, in 92 I arrived here actually in uh, May or June 92 so I wanted to share with you a little bit of uh, some of the uh, of the portraits of the people I've encountered and the characters I've encountered on the road in the last uh, 25 plus uh, years and uh, some uh, some from back then in the 90s and some from uh, from uh, recently, uh, so that's uh, that's uh, that's the purpose of today. So it's really about uh, it's really the the people, and this is what I do. This is what I like is that to connect with the people. It's not so much about really understanding what they uh, and talking to them their story, but it's really about connecting with them through uh, through photography. This is what has been uh, my uh, my motivation over the over the year. So no messaging, no uh, no. I'm not here to. Uh, to defend or or to uh, to bring any message about anybody is just mm -hmm. really to uh, to uh, to uh, to uh, to share um, with uh, the broader 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 people the, uh, the what uh, what is uh, what what's been happening in Asia in the last uh, twenty years and uh, this is interesting you will see some of these pictures so the the next pictures is interesting this is uh, 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 just as an intro it is uh, one of my most recent pictures I took actually uh, in April last year. In uh, in the Cam uh, or in Yao uh, Dao Cheng Yading Airport, this is the highest commercial airport in the in the world. And 
in Asia, as you go outside any airport, you got always a flock of people waiting for you to offer you a taxi ride. And this is one of the, of the guys waiting. So it's at 4,800 meter. So it's pretty high. Uh, and uh, that guy was waiting and uh, you can see was probably doing quite well for himself. Had a nice, uh, nice ring, gold ring and nice, uh, nice stone there. Uh, so very interesting uh, character anyway. So today I would like to uh, to to talk a little bit, uh, a little bit, bring you some more portraits and pictures I've taken in China. I was the first time I think in China in the, in ninety two or ninety three. Hong Kong. I lived in Hong Kong from ninety five to ninety uh, ninety eight. This is a city I love. This is a, a great city for street photography. Then I've been a few times to the Indian subcontinent as early as uh, in ninety ninety two or ninety three. I went to uh, to Bangladesh, to Sri Lanka. And then in the last few years, I went to Rajasthan as well, Calcutta and, uh, and Mumbai. And obviously where we live is Southeast Asia. Uh, so a few, uh, a, few, uh, a few shots here from, uh, from, uh, from the Philippines and, uh, and, uh, and Vietnam uh, to share a little bit uh, what, uh, what, what it was life back then in the 90s and a little bit, uh, in the little bit uh, now. So I'd like to, if, there's no theme really around uh, this portrait. It's a little bit of then and now to share a little mm -hmm. bit of what what was life then and how people look like, what they were doing, and a little bit showing a little bit of more of a, of a, a recent um, recent view. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Island, before you start, I have one question. So, you said uh, these images are from the nineties. So, does that mean you shot on film back then? Yeah, actually, on the, <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah, this uh, I shot was exclusively on film. Yeah. And actually, nice. mostly mostly slides. Uh, a lot of the uh, of the the pictures you see are scanned from slide, mm -hmm. and a little bit in India and Bangladesh and stuff on uh, on on film. But actually, all the pictures you see from China and Hong Kong uh, from the nineties was on slide. I had actually my first digital camera. I believe in December December two thousand two. So very late, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> nice though, right? Yeah. So, right. but uh, I really like, like, and this is funny, yeah, because we are so obsessed about gear, the lens, this and that. But actually, if you look at the, the pictures, frankly, <laughs> the pictures I like the most right? are, are the, the one I took back then. So I don't know <laughs> if there's an emotional connection to this or, or something like this, but this is a really, I think, uh, the, the pictures had a fresh eye. Uh, and frankly, I was not as obsessed as I am now about gear rendering and this like that and i think in the end as long as you have a camera i think you can take a great shot and whatever that camera that's that's really my message of course you need to be comfortable with your yep. gears like anything and uh, uh but frankly uh we should not judge uh, photographers on on their on their gear but really on the on the outcome how they get there doesn't matter okay yep, yep. All right. So this is a this is a picture from Beijing in the uh, probably in the, in winter '93. Uh, I'm sorry, my memories maybe have slipped. This is interesting. On the street of Beijing, they sell this uh, small red apple that they dip in sugar, and they sell it. So it was quite cold. And uh, I went back to uh, to Beijing uh, last year in um, in February 2019, and I thought I'm sure they are still selling this uh, red apple dipped in in sugar. So I went around a little bit and here we are, <laughs> the same cut red apple, except 25 or 27 years later, you can see, you can pay with a QR code. <laughs> Everybody's got a mobile phone, but mm -hmm. still <laughs> the apples are there. So it's just like <laughs> interesting how society has evolved. So it's kind of the same shot here. If you look at it, it's the same guy, more or less. The yep. surroundings are very similar, but the means of payment, yeah, there is cash. But of course, you see the, the WeChat the QR code there. Yeah. So I found it uh, really, uh, really interesting uh, how things have, uh, have uh, evolved. Some things are very traditional. They're used to it. Probably the taste of uh, this red apple deep in sugar. But actually, the means to get there has, uh, has evolved quite, quite dramatically. So that, I thought that was a, an interesting one. Yeah. Here, this is uh, was also in '93. Uh, we we took a tour. We went to, to a few cities. There was in in Xi'an, in the Muslim quarter in uh, in Xi'an, 
and here there was just maybe it was six o'clock just before dinner, and there were a few uh, a few cooks outside uh, having some uh, having some fun and uh, kind of in between uh, in between meals, and they uh, they kind of uh, played around a little bit, and I was with my camera, so I took uh, I took that shot. So you see, uh, it, it's not as sharp here, fun as uh, and as details as you can you can see. Now you could get probably with a digital camera these days yeah, in terms of ISO and stuff. But I think yeah. the, the atmosphere, the atmosphere is still there, which is yep. what, what counts, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the color is also nice. Yeah, the color is nice. It's very contrasty. And mm -hmm. I think we, 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 uh, we kind of uh, uh, forgot, uh, forget about it, about it. So it was a uh, was slight theme at that, at, at that stage. And I must say they look, uh, they look uh, magnificent. This is another picture was taken in uh, in U9. This one that was a bit later was in 1996 uh, uh, or not sorry 97 was a bunch of uh, farmer in the in uh, Dali uh, having a rest during uh, during uh, during lunch and having a smoke and just sitting. That was a, a, a nice. Uh, so you know the, very I, nice. I wrote, the irony about the, the the this the previous photo and this photo is that during this period nobody can be doing something like this, you know, gather on the street, you know, sitting next to each other, having a smoke. <laughs> yeah. Um, how much things has changed? No, these days probably people would be checking their WeChat or WhatsApp <laughs> or the news yes. or calling. Yeah. So I think it was a very, uh, very different time because you can see here, there's no, there's yeah, no people had no their food. job, pretty, pretty simple life. Uh, some people were reading, of course, but here, no. And uh, here was uh, just getting together, having a break. Uh, we've, we've seen that before. Here, this is a typical uh, ma uh, grandma, Chinese grandma. Yeah, it was near the, uh, the summer palace in, uh, in Beijing, also in the, in the winter, 1993. I like this picture because she had the very uh, red <laughs> cheek. cheek. <laughs> a, bit <Yeah>. like the, <laughs> a bit like the, the, the apples we saw, we saw before was taken from, uh, from below. Very, uh, very, very nice, uh, very nice lady. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, those, uh, this, this uh, during that that winter, I think this was was taken a bit later. Was in 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 ninety five. I decided we would go skiing up, up north in Heilongjiang, and on the way there, we stopped in Harbin, and Harbin is one of the uh, few locomotive depots that they had back then, and they still had some cold steam uh, locomotives. Yeah, nice. I don't. Nice. I, I, I don't know if I don't know if they still run them. It's possible in some parts of China, but I would doubt. Twenty five years later, that they still run on coal. So it was very impressive because huge machines, stuff that are gone in Europe for fifty years, and you can see, um, and the, the guys are, are are really small. So this there was at the time interesting as well. I mean, I had different gear. I was using very long lens. You can see some of these portraits. Yeah. Uh, I was using long lens, and uh, now I would get, uh, I would have more wide-angle lenses, 35 or 50, and maybe get a little bit close. Anyway, interesting. They let me in, and I took a few pictures. Probably these days would probably be difficult to just get in here, but these days there was no, <laughs> there was not such a, such control and uh, and security, so you could get uh, away pretty pretty much anywhere. This is another in interesting picture. I mean, Harbin. This is the same place. Harbin is very well known. Every year they have this uh, ice festival, so they bring ice and snow from all over the the, the place. And and they have these guys who carve uh, actually uh, ice and and snow uh, to to make uh, structures, palace and everything. So this is one of these uh, of the workers here who is uh, working with a pretty rudimentary tool. This the festival still goes on. It's a pretty cold mm. place in winter. It's minus 10, minus 15 at least. And uh, I, I would really encourage if you have an opportunity to go up there. It's pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty interesting. And interesting to go before when they do the construction because it's very, very massive. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is northern China and this is uh, in Harbin. Yeah. Uh, now we are back a little bit in, in Yunnan. And uh, this is a, a, a little bit fuzzy actually. Um, but still, I think uh, I quite like that shot. Is the um, is the uh, here's the grandfather taking care of the kid, and here in that in that province, in many places in, in China and Asia, actually they carry the kid on the back, yeah, 
they have yep, a yep. kind of uh, uh, and they, they carry around so uh, while the parents are working the, the grandparents are looking after the, the kids so that guy was uh, actually running a shop and was looking after, after the kid and um, and taking care of it yeah uh, then I was uh, I was lucky in '98 as well to go to uh, to, to Tibet, and uh, it was one is in one of the monasteries there. Uh, there was a, a few a few a few monks, and here there was one uh, very old guy. Actually, very old. I don't know. He looks old. Maybe he's not that old. He's, he's <laughs> yeah, with his uh, I mean, with the beard and the specs. No yeah, beard we go. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure, uh, Ricky. Maybe we, with a bit of effort, we could transform you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need the new, uh, you know, feature on Zoom uh, to make us uh, exactly. uh, look different. So anyway, so a min- it was a monastery really in the middle of nowhere. I forgot where it was, and there were these uh, these these monks living there and praying day in and day and day out, and uh, pretty not very welcome and. Uh, Took a few, a few, a few shots. So this is one of the monks going a pretty steep, uh, steep uh, flight of stairs. This is also in this in the same area. Uh, those are workers, uh, farmers coming back from the fields. You see the snowy mountains in the back. It's a very beautiful place here. You got the high mountains. It's, here it's already probably at three thousand meter, and mm. uh, you can see uh, people they just went about cutting grass, probably mostly for the for their for their domestic animals, and then um, and they were going back to their the to to to, to their homes. That was kind of like four or five p.m. In, at the end of the day. Very uh, very nice. Here's a is a is a monk. Is a quite close up portrait of a of a monk in a in a in a monastery. Pretty uh, pretty uh, pretty standard picture that we've seen before, but uh, very very nice, uh, very peaceful uh, image of a uh, of a. Uh, of a young uh, young monk going about uh, his uh, his studies, religious studies and academic studies. Yeah. And then was it here in the, in Lhasa, uh, there were some uh, a few uh, a little crowd like stopped, and uh, and uh, they were actually watching uh, something happening. So you see some of the local uh, local girls here, uh, kind of watching uh, something that was happening. I forgot what it was. Yeah. And uh, was it. so interesting again, right? You see the the compression here. I was using a zoom lens back then, probably a two hundred. Yeah, it was not kind of a up close wide angle type of photography. It took me a few years actually. If you think about the the, uh, the style of photography, at the beginning I was maybe a little bit uh, shy, shy or, shy, or maybe not <laughs> daring to come too close. Right? Probably that's when you start. Yeah, when you your photography. So I was kind of hiding <laughs> in a distance and uh, and using a, a zoom lens to get up close but uh, I, I, st- I still like it some uh, some of these uh, things come uh, come up uh, come up nicely yeah and here this is uh, one of my favorite this is one of the of, of the monks in one of the uh, uh, of the uh, of the uh, 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 la is called I don't know how it's called in uh, in English, but uh, where the uh, monastery, yeah. monastery, yeah, exactly yep. where the monks are actually living, and these guys uh, was uh, was just uh, walking walking around and uh, and uh, traversing the the, the the court here. So very uh, very uh, so it was uh, this was in July uh, 90, uh, 98 to be to be to be precise. Yeah, I remember that very well. Yeah, and here we are just above La Sala size at. Uh, Three plus, I think three five. Yeah, so still not too high. But then when you start living Lhasa, you go much uh, much higher. Haven't been back to this place. Haven't been back to Harbin. Haven't been back. Beijing, yeah, I was there in, back uh, last year. Um, so I'll I'll be keen to uh, to to go back and uh, explore a bit more. So that was a little bit of uh, of uh, of China. Yeah. So so now if you go back to uh, to Hong Kong, and I was fortunate to arrive in Hong Kong in ninety five. Just mm-hmm. before the handover, yeah. So uh, Hong Kong was still a kind of an independent uh, uh, territory, and uh, that was, I think, this is a typical Hong Kong <laughs> image that you might have seen in movies, and, and you still see these days, kind of a barber in a kind of a no window <laughs> kind of place. With you, there's a clock here. I'm sure if you watch carefully and you read the, you read the uh, Cantonese. Uh, 
you can you can probably tell the what, what date it was was probably in the I arrived in Hong Kong in 90, 98, 95. So actually, it was probably in the mid the mid ninety five. Yeah. So that's a typical barber shop here in in Hong Kong. Yeah. Here also typical <laughs> meat shop in Hong Kong in one Chai. And actually, you would be surprised. Yeah. You think these things don't exist? They still exist. You can still see. You go to one Chai, you still see people yep. selling meat on the outside yep. like this. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so this guy, I don't know, was he had the phone <laughs> next to uh, next to him was uh, was interesting, yeah. Uh, yeah, pro see, probably uh, the 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 only thing that changed is the phone. <laughs> yeah, pro yeah, probably yeah, yeah, good point, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and with was, a new, uh, <laughs> air, probably with a new uh, airport, uh, airport, stuck yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Otherwise, the glasses, the meat, probably the same. Yeah, the shirt and stuff, not yeah, pretty. Uh, Pretty, pretty standard, yeah. And actually, this is what I love about Hong Kong. I don't know, fun when if you've been to Hong Kong, if you don't, it's like it's such a vibrant city, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you if you look around a bit, you're a bit curious. You can see many, many interesting, uh, interesting places. And uh, life, you got really this, this, this Chinese way of doing. They still have this kind of Western influence a little bit, yeah. And the, the two coexist kind of. And uh, and and people just go on and do their 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 their, their own business. Yeah, very interesting. This is uh, another view of, uh, of of Hong Kong taking from a uh, from a height in uh, central during uh, peak hour. Uh, so people uh, mostly uh, uh, people going about their 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 life, their, their business life, going to probably around was probably around lunchtime here, and the kind of crossing was in uh, in central at that uh, at that time. Yeah. Interesting. And talking about the old days, yeah. <laughs> Fun. So, oh, yeah. You don't see that. You don't see that anymore, right? Not on the street, yeah. It was yeah. In one try was one of these uh, adult cinema, if you like. Yeah. And it was before the internet, before anything, you know, the the mid nineties. So it was interesting. I was just walking by, and there was this grandpa uncle looking at a at the at the beauties. <laughs> let's put it this way, and kind of like uh, saying. I don't know what he said, but but kind of uh, like uh, probably interested anyway. So I just stopped by and took a quick <laughs> quick stab and 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 run. So very, very interesting because this for me is just just shows I mean uh, the interest, but also obviously the uh, how things have changed over the yeah. over the years because this these places in most in most areas have just simply disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. So that was before the internet. Yeah, Ricky. Yeah. Yep. All right, this is also another kind of a classical uh, view of Hong Kong. You've got the tram in the back. Here's a backlit uh, picture with the, the, and people just uh, going. It's very bustling. If any, if, if some of the listeners have, haven't been back to Hong Kong, if there is one place you need to see in Asia, definitely is, uh, is, is Hong Kong. Because you will see the, the, modern, the modern side of Hong Kong, the, the glitzy side, but you'll see also the, uh, the daily life and the, uh, what what people do on the on the daily basis, which is uh, uh, not always very uh, very glitzy and very uh, very funny. Yeah. So yeah, the, the, the very, thing with, the thing the thing with Hong Kong is that is uh they they are fighting for space. And every corner you go, you see different thing. It could be something very modern just in front of you, but if you turn the corner, mm -hmm. it's something you know something rustic. You know, the old Hong Kong is just in front of you, especially on uh, Hong Kong mm -hmm. Island. You know. Right, right. Yeah. And unlike, unlike Singapore, this is a completely uh, un, unmanaged kind of uh, environment when it comes, let's say, to, uh, to housing, yeah? So here in Singapore, people, most people usually get, get something, get to, to live in a decent place. In Hong Kong, it's completely unregulated. Yeah? Mm, so yep. The rents are, are crazy, the price are crazy, and you have a People say about two million people living in really very 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 small place, yeah, and that's just the reality of uh, of, of Hong Kong. So very uh, very harsh and very hard environment, yeah. Uh, let's say I would say probably harder than uh, than, than Singapore, although sometimes in Singapore it's hard for some people. But there, I would say uh, you really have to fight to make a, a living, otherwise it's it's uh, it's pretty tough. And this is, I think what makes it also an interesting place because there's always something happening. It's never idle, yeah? 
I mean, Singapore yep. sometimes a bit either. I mean, I always compare Singapore and Hong Kong. I always think Singapore is a bit of a village <laughs> compared to to, uh, to to Hong Kong. A bit quiet and uh, and subdued. Whether Hong Kong is always on, always on, because you have no choice yet. If you want to make a living, you you gotta you gotta yep. make a living. Yep. This is a, a more recent picture that was uh, taken in uh, uh, of uh, at uh, at sun, uh, sunset between the two buildings in uh, in Hong Kong. Call it the Shadow People. Um, and then this is, I would say, a typical. Uh, this is also from last uh, last year or two years ago in Hong Kong. It's typical scene in Hong Kong where you see a, an uncle or a, a lady pushing a, a cart, yeah, and going about their her business, yeah. Uh, so this is, I would say, a typical uh, scene you can see in uh, in in Hong Kong these days. And this has not changed very much in the last, I would say, uh, I would say, thirty years, yeah. Okay, uh, Hong Kong is also famous <laughs> for its rugby tournament mm. uh, and uh, called the rugby, uh, I mean, is a, is a tour, it's called the Rugby Sevens and uh, I've been there a few times. It's a pretty wild, wide place, it's in the Hong Kong stadiums and there's a famous south stand where people disguise and you can disguise and there is, you can drink, there is beer, there is everything. And uh, people go pretty, pretty crazy and pretty, pretty wild. Always, always okay. Always under control. No fight and things like that. Uh, but it's pretty interesting. So the one of the guys, you see, guys, some guys go really to the extremes in terms of here they put some kind of tar and some, some glue and they drink and it's for three days, and it's like from nine to uh, to eight p.m. and then they continue in one channel on quite fun. So you can imagine next day. Everybody's in great shape. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I would really recommend to go there with a camera because it's quite fantastic uh, to see some of the of the characters that are just going there. Is a is a is a is a big show and uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It's and, and I, I think it's one of the uh, most popular seven series around the whole world. Yes, a, a, exactly. Yeah. And it's uh, it's well policed in terms of like. You can't go out of war. There, there are people that are watching what's happening. They are plain clothes policemen, but but people know that you you gotta behave and stuff. So and they allow you to drink. So you can imagine that some people after a few hours kind of yep. lose it and go a little bit crazy. But never, never completely uh, out of the top. Yeah. This is another view of Hong Kong. View from the other side on the on the island. Typical, a uh, bit of a romantic uh, picture here. Of a, of, a, of a lady dragging the uh, her boyfriend or husband uh, arm here, taking from her thing with the, the island. On the, I mean, I would say Hong Kong is, is really the skyline and the atmosphere is very unique. You got the island on one side, got Kowloon on the other side. Yep. And uh, I always really loved it. Yeah. I really loved it. It has a lot of character. I mean, if you ask me between Singapore and Hong Kong in terms of skyline, I definitely prefer the, the Hong Kong skyline, although it has changed a lot. Uh, it has, it has, a, I think, a lot of uh, a lot of character, and the diversity of people and uh, walk of life that you see there is uh, is also very fascinating. Yeah. Okay. Now going back to the Indian subcontinent, one of the uh, one of the thing, and you can see a earphone. Yeah. This is filmy. Yeah. <laughs> a bit damaged. Yeah. You can <laughs> and, see the uh, grain. Was, nice, nice the, yeah. the grain and the the, the scratches. The, the scratches. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think it was a Kodak standard black uh, color film yeah i forgot what it was yeah i had with me and uh and uh, i remember i went out i was was it actually 92 one of the first uh, place i went was in in bangladesh and uh, there was mm -hmm. this kid on the on the streets there was also uh, so i don't know if you read the hindi or sanskrit i don't know what language is that uh or there was uh, on the street there was this classical uh, bit type of probably advertising for bollywood movie yeah. uh, with elephant, horses, women in bottle, wine. <laughs> Probably a bit of a drama there, yeah. I'm not sure yeah. what it says, but can you read it to a fan or mm, no. But it looks <laughs> it looks uh Bangladeshi though. You don't look uh, yeah. yeah, Tamil. Ah, okay. Oh Tamil, yeah, they, they speak Tamil there, is it right? Yeah. Mm, dip, depends on the continent. Uh. If the one nearer to India will will speak Tamil. Mm. So I, so I was on the street, so I, I thought I took a, a picture. This is in, uh, in Sri Lanka. Um, Sri Lanka, as you know, is, is well known for uh, 
for picking up, for providing um, tea. Yep. And this is where they had uh, initially a lot of tea plantations. So there was in the tea plantation some uh, some women picking up tea. Yeah. And here was by the coast was very uh, uh, interesting picture. So th those two kids and this family actually, uh, I, I quite thought about it when the tsunami hit. When was it in two thousand? Uh, when was it the tsunami? The big uh, the big tsunami that wiped out uh, a lot of Indonesia and. Uh, Thailand and 2000 2008 2008 was it or anyway yeah, just, this, yeah. these places got really affected and they were they were quite poor and you see they live on the here on the on the beach and all the rest and uh, I just wonder what happened to that family because you can imagine if a big wave comes in it would just get wiped out yeah so very uh, very tough uh, very tough place yeah but very uh, very nice people uh, then uh, uh, recently I went to uh, I did a few trips. I did a trip with the family to Rajasthan, and uh, I went on my own to uh, to uh, Mumbai and uh, Kolkata. So there was on the train here in uh, in Rajasthan. One of the guy looking after the uh, the cleanliness of the of the train was sitting on his uh, on his on his back like this, and uh, so I took a picture of him. It was a nice nice guy. There were <laughs> a few uncles here having a early morning <laughs> bath in. Uh, in one of the angle, the, the guy looks at me with an eye half closed, like, what are you doing here? Why are you taking my pictures? I thought it was a, quite a interesting, uh, interesting, interesting uh, photo. Uh, so how's your, in, how's your engagement with the people that you, you encounter taking their photos? Yeah, so usually I, I, just, I just come here and I spend usually five, 10 minutes at least, yeah, before I start snapping around and, and stuff like that. So people, I mean, they see me, they see my camera, they know I'm here to take a picture. You should, yeah, as I said, I'm, I'm not trying to, uh, to entertain much of a discussion and understanding what they It depends, yeah? Sometimes they want to talk, sometimes they don't want to talk. Um, but I'm not here to, uh, to, to, to make a, a documentary or reportage about these special people, right? So, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, usually they, they see I, I feel pretty comfortable. And I think that's the... Uh, that's really important when you do a uh, photography of people. If people think you're comfortable, it's never the, the problem is never the problem of the subject, yeah? It's always you. If you're yeah. comfortable with your camera and they see you're, you're pretty uh, relaxed and all the rest, you can basically take a lot of pictures. Yeah, I, think I believe so. And I think it's, it's just also your approach. It's just like you're not hiding your camera and then when you want to take a photo, you take it out, you know? People, mm will feel of, uh, scared in some ways and then that's where they become uh, defensive. And you see, there was a, I had this big, uh, big ass kind of lens in the 90s, yeah? And um, there was no Instagram, there was no internet. Now, I mean, when now I have much smaller gear and people, they, they, they see that, so they are not, it's very important as well that you, you, you bring with you very little, right? So because people are really a little bit these days, a bit paranoid, yeah, that as, as soon as you're going to uh, take their picture, you're going to just upload it to wherever place, yeah. So, so I think it's important. So I think what helped me a few times is that since it's, it's really a hobby and passion, it's not for, for any commercial purpose. Usually, it, it, I get asked maybe 50% of the time is that, is my job? Is I'm making money of these pictures and all this? And I, I usually I say I say no, which is the reality. And mm -hmm. it really, it, it helps uh, break the barrier a little bit. Uh, but I would say uh, it's more about if you feel comfortable, and uh, then then people let you do that your job. Was in uh, in the, one of the city in the in the, the south of uh, of, uh, of Rajasthan as well. Here, some guys taking. Uh, Having a rest, yeah. You can see uh, dressed to treasure with the the sacred cow going by. Yeah. Very, uh, very, very, very nice. Yeah. Uh, this was in uh, in Mumbai by the by by, by the sea, the south part of, uh, of of Mumbai. Very poor area. A lot of fishermen here, and uh, and some boats being under repair. You can see a lot of trash. So very poor area, and, and people really have only the sea here to make a living. So they go out at sea in the in the morning and then and then and then then come back in the evening uh, a lot of uh, birds that pick up the rest of uh, of uh, what happened during the day and uh, yeah. so this is also uh, an interesting period in mumbai they have one of the still largest open air 
uh, public washing place. Mm. They call it Dobi. Yeah, Dobi. In, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you Dobie get God. the name uh, for Dobi God. Yeah, in yes, true. Singapore used Actually, to it's true. Yeah. They yes. used to have that in Singapore, right? Yes, right? yes. Dobi God. Yes. Yeah. But it was a while ago, I guess, yeah? Well, a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. So I think way a, before so World this, War Two. Yeah, yeah. So, the, And this place is, quite, is fairly amazing. So when they're in the morning, this is where one of the place, because I guess I'm not the only one, right? And uh, probably it's it's well known, right? Obviously it is well known. So they, they didn't feel very comfortable initially, but then I, I spent uh, about two hours and then I left, but then I could, I could go around. The, so it's, it's incredible. They, 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 they have marks on the shirt. You wonder how they keep track here. Yeah? It's incredible. They have a system. Nothing is computerized here. Yeah? They have, they put marks on the shirt somewhere and they know always where it comes from. They probably have their clients and stuff. And then the process is very interesting. They wash stuff by hand. Sometime now you could see they have a few machines to actually, um, how do you call it? Uh, to get the water out, how do you call this process here? Uh, anyway, and then they have guys and, or women actually ironing the stuff here somewhere. So actually I'm sure all the hotels or all the hospitality places, I'm sure they send their stuff there. You would not know, but, and the area is, is huge. Yeah, it's a kind of a two or, two or three blocks. And um, yeah, it's quite it's quite fascinating to uh, to see. Yeah. So these days, I'm just thinking how they do yeah, with the with the current crisis and uh, social distancing. Probably these guys are out of job. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I cannot imagine they, they they continue to work. Yeah. But it's true. It's Dobby. Yeah. So I thought yeah. about it. Yeah. Oh, but Dobby got <laughs> yes. Exactly yes, Dobby got. <laughs> so did you did anybody stop you? You know, uh, during all no, these actually, trips? I, no, I didn't. I didn't get any stops. I got a few a few looks here yeah. uh, because obviously I'm not the only one going there. They have okay. a few, uh, a few, a few tourists going there here and there and usually in groups. So, you know, a bit invasive as well, right? Sometimes people are a little bit uh, not so cautious. So they just go around and, and stuff and take pictures. So people are, you know, it's not an amusement park here. Yeah? They are not, <laughs> they're not here to, it's not a catwalk here. Yeah? They're not here waiting to pose for you. They, they have to do their job. So, so I don't think they, they like to have so much uh, people going around. Uh, it, it gets in the way. But if you're discreet, then uh, uh, I think you can still uh, take some uh, noise. There was uh, uh, some fishermen here on the, uh, also in, uh, in, in Mumbai in the, in the afternoon, uh, repairing or sorting their, their, their net that you can see on the floor. Pretty messy, I would say. Yeah. Uh, yeah so uh but uh, always very cheerful very happy in general i think i tell you uh, they have a their life is not is not that, that easy but i think always i found always very uh, very positive character at least uh, in front of my camera that was in uh, kolkata this is the main uh, the main river here i don't know if you see on the bridge here yeah, there are thousands and thousands of people crossing here yeah? and here the people go and wash and jump in the in the in the in, in the river, uh, another 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 pretty crowded uh, uh, city. This is uh, Kolkata. Yeah. Here, this is uh, one uh, one uh, young guy. Yeah, uh, just uh, looks like the, the the pipe had burst. Yeah. Burst, yeah. Out the, yeah, out of the the, the concrete, and the, the guy was uh, was uh, so interesting. I didn't ask him anything. He was was just passing by. And the guy was just watching, so I just he saw me. I took a pictures, and 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 that's it. So it was not stage or any anything. So I don't stage my my uh, my pictures. Also, is one thing I wanted to say. Um, obviously, people are always aware, right, that I'm taking pictures. I'm not sneaking in or hiding anything. So obviously, they are very conscious. But I would say pretty pretty natural. Yeah. Was <laughs> interesting. Was probably a, on a Sunday. It was a, they have all these old. Uh, all English cars in uh, in uh, Calcutta, and uh, there was one taxi driver here having a rest <laughs> on the on the back seat of uh, of his car. <laughs> a lot of people are asking, was he dead? <laughs> no, he was not dead. He was very much alive, but he was just very uh, very tired and uh, and sleepy. Yeah. Interesting movement of the of the arm. Yeah. Okay, so now this is uh, now going back to. Um, to uh, to uh, a little bit uh, 
Southeast uh, Asia, probably one of the most memorable trip I, I did was in, uh, again, was in 92 when I went to uh, Myanmar, uh, Burma, yeah. Uh, here was early in the morning was a, a market. And if you look at the, you see the, you see the, the, the horses, you see the, the, the carts. It's, it's very, nothing is motorized. Yeah. There was kind of the, uh, uh, very early, early morning and, uh, very, very farm type of environment and very, uh, very, 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 very local with no no motor, complete silence. You could the only thing you could hear is the uh, probably the, uh, the the chicken and the, and uh, and uh, and other kind of animals. So very 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 quiet place, very beautiful. Yeah. And here are some of the the the, the portraits I, I took there in the morning. On the right side, this is in the, in uh, in uh, in Pagan near the uh, near the big uh, the big. Uh, how do you call it? supers and here this is what the, i forgot the name of that powder this is uh, not powder this is kind of a, a earth type of uh, protection that they put on their on their on their skin mm. against the the, the, the the sun uh i forgot the name of that uh, that kind of uh, thing a very uh, very very beautiful uh, very beautiful view. it was in the morning uh, morning light and uh, very proud and uh, very beautiful people yeah uh, we, it's uh, called tanaka that's what they use. Tanaka. Oh, yeah, you Tanaka. just Google it, yeah? Yep. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Alan, we have a few questions here. Uh, yeah, so, sure. yeah, there's, there's two questions uh, regarding uh, when, you're, when you're in India. So, uh, they ask, uh, how do you go around with a guide or alone? or And how safe is it generally there? Actually, uh, I would say every place I've been in Asia always been very safe, yeah. And India... Yeah. Very safe as well. So Rajasthan was a, a, a it was for two weeks with the family. So I organized a, a car with a driver, and that took us around in uh, Udaipur, Jaipur, Jaisalmer, and so on. Um, and then we would uh, would stop uh, along the way. And then the last, uh, the other two trips in Mumbai or Calcutta, I was on I was on my own. Yeah, I was not for work. Mm -hmm. I just I just went there for three or four days. Yeah. So. Yeah, I would say very, very, very safe. Uh, you don't, obviously, you don't want to showcase your, your well-to-do and all the rest, yeah? Uh, but usually very, very safe. I've never had any trouble. I never, I've, I've heard so many stories that people beg in India and all the rest. To be frank, mm -hmm. I haven't seen it a single time. I went to railway station and all the rest. So I don't know. This is what I think comes down with the way you carry yourself, the way you present yourself. Uh, I think people know that you're not uh, you're not there to actually uh, 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 it's not it's not going to work so usually the the refrain i mean some time to time you get people asking for money i think it's is is standard but uh, but usually uh, pretty safe yeah. okay so there's no pestering going around no pestering or very very, very a little bit yeah of course yeah but uh, i think you just uh, when it happens, if you're not interested, you just you just carry on and uh, and and that's it. That's the I would say this is also the recommendation I have is that when you go on on to take some pictures, I think it's quite important. I think it's it's always better if you go by yourself. Yes. When you I start going, with, yeah, I don't know if you agree on, but is that first of all you don't want to impose what you want to take to the others, and then you have to wait on each other. So. So I think it's it's better if you because you want to explore, you want to see, especially in places like this. This is the first time you go, for example. You want to explore, you want to see with your eyes. So you don't want to you you want to you don't want to depend on anyone else, right? Yep. Uh, so especially for that type of photography where you don't have necessarily a specific objective, you just walk around and and see for yourself and look at angles and stuff. You don't want to be disturbed or or adhere to any timeline or itinerary. So better to uh, better to be on your own. So did you try the street food in India? <laughs> the street food, to be frank, no. Okay. No, because not that I don't trust, but but this is where I think having a local person would be would be useful. If yeah. a local person tell me you can try, then I would definitely try. It's not a question I don't want to eat street food, but just on my own, not knowing. 
I, I'd rather not try not to upset my stomach here, to be frank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Because the thing is, if you're there for a couple of days, no point taking the risk and then upset your, uh, your, your tummy and then you can't that's do right. anything for the next couple of days. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, so you see this, uh, this interesting because I really take this kind of portraits these days. Yeah, is uh, you can see the, the, the background is very blurred. This is mm -hmm. using a very long, uh, very long lens. But it's, it's interesting is the style. And uh, what is remarkable, I think, I haven't found it yet in, uh, in modern technology, is the, the, this kind of color and rendering. I don't yes. know. There is something to this. I don't know if it's me, it's nostalgia or emotions, but there is something to it that it's hard to reproduce. And I know these days with technology, with filters, you can do many things, but still. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the fun part of shooting slides and film. You, know, you have that, yeah. that special uh, thing with them. Right, yeah. And actually, you can still shoot slides and stuff, too. I mean, uh, <laughs> if you have a, a camera, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can, yeah, be my guest. You've got to be a bit patient, that's all. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Any other question, uh, Ricky, or that we just go on? Uh, yeah, you can go on first. Okay, so this is then uh, uh, another place that is dear to me. This is the Philippines, yeah, that was in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the 90s in, in Boracay. There were these fishermen, yeah. Just at sunset, sitting so that took a little bit this uh, bit of a postcard, but uh, still uh, a nice, uh, a nice picture. And then, uh, as you know, the Philippines is uh, is a very <laughs> religious place, very uh, uh, Catholic, Christian Catholic. And was here was in um, in um, garage, uh, a fuel station and garage. And they had so, and these guys were fixing cars, and they had these huge murals, yeah, with uh, scenes uh, of uh, of uh, religious scenes, basically Christian, mostly, yeah. Mm. Was uh, was fairly, but huge. I mean, you can see the head of the guy was probably one two one and a half meter by three meter long on both sides of the garage. You could not, <laughs> you could not avoid them, yeah. Very, uh, very. Very, very interesting the uh, the uh, the uh, influence and uh, the power of uh, religion in the, in this country. This is uh, another uh, another another picture interesting. This this is the newsstand, yeah, where they were selling local news newspaper, uh, and then in a in a city not far from Manila, I forgot who it was, and that that guy was just reading the the headlines, just standing in his sneakers, yeah. <laughs> At, uh, at, uh, at, uh, at, at sunset, so I thought uh, something probably you don't you don't see it these days anymore. Yeah, I, are, are, are I, I mean yeah. nowadays people don't actually buy physical papers anymore. Mm. So what what's still there is the on the right side the jeepney, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, this I don't think has changed very much in the last. Uh, 25 years you can see did you try years, the but... jeepney while you were there i, I tried yeah well, i tried once yeah well, i tried once yeah um uh a bit a bit squeezed yeah but uh, <laughs> that's the way it is yeah. this is a this is a trip i did uh, in um in 26 in 2017 actually I went to uh, back to uh, the Philippines. Haven't been back since the mid '90s, and I spent uh, about a few days in Mandaluyong, which is one of the uh, uh, districts in, uh, in in Manila, where a lot of uh, Filipino lives and the and the roofs and stuff. So very uh, very super friendly people. And this is coming back to your question: Is it safe? I mean, for mm -hmm. sure, this is a very poor poor place, but it's not a slum. Yeah, people are are are, are working. Uh, of course, this is tough. Whenever there is a typhoon coming, things get ripped, ripped, and uh, and. Uh, but what I, I really admire and what I found really uh, infectious is the uh, the positivity of the of the of the people in uh, in the in the in the Philippines. It's pretty 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 amazing when you when you see the kind of uh, thing. And I think they quite like. I mean, you see a lot of people are smiling. I didn't ask them to smile or anything. They pretty naturally they they just. Uh, 
like to portray themselves on the on the positive side. I'm sure it's not always positive. They have their own challenges and struggles, but they mm-hmm. uh, they, they they like to portray a, a positive uh, side of things. Yeah. Do you show them the photos after you take them? Yeah, sometimes I, I do show. It depends. Yeah. So obviously, what's here was digital. So uh, sometimes I do show them the picture. Sometimes it happened that they give me the uh, their email address when they have mm. one. Uh, so I, I do send the, the, the picture. It happened a, a, a few times. But you would be surprised. Some of them don't even have an email address there. Yeah, yeah because they require access to a, a smartphone or a computer. Yeah, and the access of a smartphone is not so much the issue. The access is to data, yeah? And yep. data, oh, yeah, data, yes. They need to pay, right? Yes. And, yep. uh, and those, those people, I tell you, they probably live on $2, $3 a day, right? So they are really not very, uh, not very rich. And while uh, telco and data is, uh, is, fairly, is fairly cheap, still uh, it's quite a, it's quite, if they want to go down this path, it's still quite a big uh, investment for them, yeah. It is, yeah. Yeah, every country people drink. Yeah, why not? <laughs> some people might not drink, but so uh, <laughs> here's some, uh, having a, some guys having a, a laugh and a, and a few, a few, a few beers and a smoke, yeah. So I think some some sins are pretty common all around the world. Yeah. yeah. So the, so are you setting. are you also drinking with them? I was not no because I was taking the picture <laughs> <laughs> not that time. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it, interestingly, uh, you asked because a few times I got I got asked to uh, whether I wanted to have a, a sip or a drink, uh, and usually I, I I don't I don't I don't I try not to mix the two either. I taking photograph or I drink. <laughs> Taking the two is a bit, uh, bit dangerous, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So I think very, 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 very tough life. Yeah. And uh, uh, people live there on the on the streets, make a, a meager living, uh, and uh, and uh, are hit pretty badly. And uh, as you know, I mean, uh, you see them everywhere, right? In uh, in uh, in Southeast Asia. It's well known the uh, the Filipino are very good singers, yeah. Yeah, indeed, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, you, so uh, the interesting and usually when there is singing, there is a shot nearby, yeah. So these guys was preparing shots, and uh, the other guy was kind of uh, singing or playing karaoke, yeah. Uh, and uh, the the two went well. So it was interesting because it was not for me, right? They were doing it, practicing and and stuff like that, and I just. Uh, I just it just happened that I was uh, passing by. <laughs> nice, very very cool. Uh, now going back in uh, in time, uh, no, it's not in India. This is in uh, in Hanoi actually, and this is the uh, the bridge that was uh, built in the, uh, at the at the beginning of the last uh, century. The if you go back to Hanoi now, because of the climate and the change, there's actually almost no water here. Mm. Uh, so that was in 90, probably 93 here in the winter, 93 or 94. Uh, there were these, uh, these ladies selling, uh, selling bananas by the, by the river. And this is the, 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 the pedestrian and railway bridge that uh, people uh, cross. So yeah, very, not very mechanized. A lot of, a uh, lot of, uh, as you can see here, uh, this is the kind of view you don't see in Hanoi these days yet. Yeah? Only almost 90% was uh, bicycles, yeah, with a few, uh, a few uh, motorcycles. Now it's kind of the opposite, yeah. Opposite, it's yes. The reverse, yeah, is the opposite, yeah. So you see a few bicycles, but most people. So it was very, uh, I still like Hanoi a lot because the good thing about Hanoi is that they, while the suburbs are, are don't don't resemble much, the the old quarter and the the, the inner city, they still have managed to preserve preserve it pretty well yeah there's no huge skyscrapers and stuff like that so i think uh, it's, uh, it's it looks good and these are the two uh, two, uh, two two picture this is one of the uh, boy one boy yeah crossing it was we were on our way to halong bay so this is one of the the boy crossing the uh, rushing to put something on the ferry before the crossing and this is here a portrait of a a, a boy on the on the uh, on the boat in uh, in Halong Bay. Yeah. So this is this is uh, this is it. Uh, pretty much, uh, uh, Ricky. What I wanted to uh, to share. Obviously, I have a lot more. 
and you can see them on my uh, on my uh, on my website. Uh, I don't know. Are there any any questions, or do you wanna? Yeah, definitely. I mean, have have you been back to the same places uh, all these years for those the uh, photos that you have taken back in Flerm? Have you visited them? No, I haven't. I haven't been back yet yeah, to uh, to uh, a few places. I haven't been back to uh, to Tibet yet, yeah, uh, where I'd like to to go back. Uh, I haven't I haven't been back to uh, to Myanmar yeah, actually to Burma since ninety uh, two or ninety three Bangladesh. So it definitely is on my list yeah, of things uh, I'd like to uh, to visit again uh, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and uh, otherwise, uh, uh, yeah, I will. Uh, I will continue to, uh, to 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 see. I mean, it's always. I always like to go to a place. I don't know if if you you guys feel the same, but when I come to a place for the first time, with no expectation, no view, I always I always find it more more interesting. Yeah. Yes. I, I get this fresh look, naive, and this is usually. The pic the best pictures I've I've taken, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Talking uh, about I, the, I, I the go, go there. Talk, sorry, talking about the photo that you took, the bananas by the river. So why are they pe people selling uh banana by the river? Is is there a lot of it's just uh, a market. traffic? No, because they, they, they come by boat, yeah. Uh, that's the reason why they are by the river. So they yeah. they, they live on the boats on the river, so and they, they, they get to uh, to carry stuff on, on boats between places. So they just had the boat there and they, they sell the banana. So they had a kind of a small, uh, small market. Yeah. So this is the, the, the kind of photography I do, right? So I, uh, I wake up, I just go and, and walk around. Yeah. And mm -hmm. in places like you always find things interesting. It was never planned yet to take a picture of, mm -hmm. uh, of, uh, of such a scene. And this is what I really love about photography is the, the, the surprise that you get sometimes uh, by uh, bumping into, uh, into scenes that, uh, uh, like, like like this. So the element of surprise is always uh, something I really liked about uh, photography. And uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes you come back, you didn't see or find anything interesting. And sometimes you do, yeah. Okay, we have uh, another question from May Lee. So uh, the question is, uh, what inspire you f to do photography? And what inspire you to have this theme of portraits of Asia. This um, so 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 photography for me it's a it's a it's it's a way to uh, to, to to connect with uh, with with people yeah if you if you like uh, and and kind of uh, a little bit portray a little bit what is their 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 life yeah what is their living condition and stuff like that and since I've been continue and I've been. Uh, Photographing for a while now, since the early nineties, it's always it's getting more and more interesting. I would say to see mm -hmm. some of the pictures from the uh, from the early nineties and see some of the pictures and the the evolution of of, of, of things. So I found it interesting in photography this the, the the timeline aspect of going how things are are evolving. And obviously, that's also a nice way to to go out there and and connect and see things for your, for, for 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 yourself. And capture the environment. So I would say that's my main uh, main motivation. And why Asian portraits? I mean, whether you, whether or not, I'm I'm not too much into landscape. I'm not too much into architecture. I really like to 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 take pictures of, of people, the daily life, what's happening, the kind of street photography where most 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 of the time they are people. So that's why I, I try to organize a little bit the the uh, some some photographs around that 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 theme because. I think it's very relevant. We're all humans, and I think we uh, we can always. Uh, it is easy to 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 connect with, yeah. So, have you ever got stopped by people say, "Hey, stop taking the photo, or do not take any photos"? Uh, yeah, it happened a few. It happened, yeah, a few times. Sometimes uh, people don't want, so you just, you know, don't make a big fuss. You just just walk away. Yeah. I just think it's being it res respectful as, it, is is very important for street photography that yes. a lot of people need to realize. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important that you don't want to impose there. If, 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 if it happens that people don't want to have their pictures taken. And the reason, you don't want to ask the reason, right? But the reason yep. can be various. They don't want to, they're, it's not a, they're not having a good day or sometimes they don't 
think they look good. <laughs> you know, it happens. They, you, they, you'll they, be surprised maybe they, the reason. Yeah. They don't want to be known to be there at that point of time. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And, and I tell you, a lot of people are, are afraid that you're going to use the picture. First of all, sell them without their, yep. their, their rights. And then, uh, obviously, uh, being public. And it's true, I've, I've been a few places. I'm not saying that people were doing things illegal, but people don't want to know, don't want to make this public, right? So it's yep. a bit yep. of an intimate affair, and I respect that. Uh, so if, if people want to take the picture, want me to take the pictures, that's fine. If they don't want, I just, I just walk. I never argue. I mean, it happened to me maybe three or four times that people asked to look at the picture and asked me to delete it, but very rare to be frank. Okay. Very, oh, wow. very rare, very rare, very rare. And actually it was more in Europe than, <laughs> or than in Asia. In Asia, I don't think any time yet. Yeah. I think, I think depending on the country you go, also the people that you see. Yes. The culture and everything. Yeah. Okay. We, we have another question. So, uh, Paige, uh, would like to ask, how do you overcome your shyness to do portraits without the telephoto and also how do you prepare yourself before you take any photo close up so the when you when you the the, the shyness is something you, you overcome I, I believe like anything in with practice yeah so you gotta you gotta practice so it's not like you wake up and you're gonna do it. so you gotta do two pictures and do pictures and do pictures and you you realize that you take better pictures I think when you get a little bit closer to the person yeah because people obviously see you with this long lens that you're trying to sneak in something from the distance, yeah. yeah. So obviously the, the connection is not the same. So, so I think you, you realize that you can take, you get a better connection, you get better pictures when you overcome the shyness and get up close. And you just try, yeah. It's true, you have to force yourself sometime a little bit. And I, I got this question a few times. Some people just, just can't do it. But my view, I think anybody can do it, is, is like anything in life requires practice so, yep. so just go out there take take uh, take, uh, take take pictures and then there nothing can happen to you the worst thing can happen to you is that the person doesn't want or the person asks you to delete the picture but I, I swear to god you're never going to get beaten up or anything like this yeah correct yeah, so, true. but but it's it's some people are a little bit uh, uncomfortable it's it's it, it's true and uh, and here i'm not and uh, uh, so you, you, you got to try, yeah, and uh, it's force a little bit yourself, yeah. I know some people are a bit uncomfortable, but very frankly, this is the way I was also when I started shooting. And you see, I had this big, uh, big lens and stuff, so I was shooting mm -hmm. always from five or ten meter. But then you change, you change, yes. and then you get more comfortable with your gear and your attitude. And you see, the people who come is when a photographer comes to you, they see you, right? If you're comfortable and stuff then the person is not going to get nervous. Yeah. So this is why I say it's, it's, it's really not so much about the subject, it's really more about, uh, about you. Yeah, and, and the movement of your, the photographer itself. You know, like what I say earlier on, it's like you don't bring up the camera out of a sudden and then try to take a photo. You know? It's always not to expose your camera everywhere you go, but when you hold it with the subject sees that you have a camera, they feel comfortable. Sure. Yeah. Right. And also the other big, big thing is never rush, right? Obviously, when, when, they see, when, they see, when people see you rushing and stuff, this is where people get usually a little bit, uh, a little bit nervous. Yeah. yeah. And then you say this is not commercial. This is a hobby. I'm just walking around taking pictures just to command daily life, street yep. photography. Most people, to be frank, uh, are usually. Now, that said, I've, I know some friends who've been in South America, Latin America. They tell me it's a little bit different there. It could be a little bit more, a bit, a bit more challenging sometimes. So I think, like Fan said, it has to do a little bit with the culture. Yep. Yeah. I think in the Asian culture, photography is very ingrained. I mean, you see, you always make fun of the Asians, yeah, when you see everything, taking pictures of them here and there. <laughs> so I think they're, they're kind of, kind of used to it, yeah. Well, so, it depends uh, where you go. Uh, somebody oh. pointed a knife at me when I was uh, doing some street photography in uh, South Korea. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she was cutting some fish and then I took a photo and she's like... Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. It depends on the day. Maybe like what, what you say, sometimes they might have a bad day, you know. And, exactly. and then somebody walked there and decided, 
in, they intrude exactly. into their, their space, they feel threatened in a way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, we have another question uh, by Renate. So uh, the question is, uh, in what country or culture did you have most problems taking photographs? I would say it was, I didn't present any pictures on this, but I had this uh, with Expos, I presented my picture. It was probably in, the, in West Papua, in the Indonesia. Mm. And the reason is, is that it's such a remote place and they're not used to, to seeing many foreigners, not as much as other places. They're a little bit, uh, a bit suspicious, yeah, <laughs> of your intent. And so I didn't have many problems, but I would say you could see that they are not so much necessarily used to it or kind yeah. of uh, 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 so i would say in indonesia in west papua yeah uh this is where i think uh, where i had probably uh, uh, a little bit more uh, a bit more, more challenges but always but 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 frankly uh, i never got to a point where it was dangerous or anything like this mm -hmm. so we're going to share something uh the, our next talk coming up next week, next Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have Daryl uh, that will be joining us on next Friday, 9 p.m. Uh, on our, our Facebook page. He will, talk, he will be share a little bit of, about his uh, interest about photography, you know, and uh, also about uh, financial services. Uh, how are they coping during this period of time and what, what is the new method, uh, new norm that they are trying to uh, uh, adapt to. Yeah, so this is coming up next Friday and then Sunday, I believe, is uh, Hari Raya uh, Puasa and then Fun is taking a break. So we will rest yeah. uh, for, for Saturday and Sunday and resume yeah. the following week. <laughs> Stay home, Are you right been here. resting for two months here, yeah? Fun, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> what do you need to rest, man? Oh, it's tradition, yeah. No, yeah. I, I, I need rest from the social media. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> oh, you need to rest. Yeah, you, we all need a rest from Ricky yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> He's gonna lock up his phone in the drawer. You know. Yeah. yeah it's tr it's true, Ricky. Yeah, I can see you are very. Uh, no, fun. You are very active on social media. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> he is. He is indeed. Yeah. So uh, okay. Without... Thanks for having me again. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you the next time. All right. Bye-bye. All right, we are offline.